Hey, hey, Waishi Adventures. It's Sinka here, <laughs> creator of Waishi Adventures. Um, and today with me, I have got the amazing Holly Weston with me, um, who is here to have a good powwow about why she loves to adventure. Hey, Holly. Hey, how's it going? I'm Maybe awesome. Yeah, we're so, I'm so stoked to have you here. We've um, had a few catch-ups before we got on the call. I was just laughing. I was like, it's really nice to actually stop and have a conversation about adventure because it's always us like meeting at a run group where Holly's pretty fast and I'm usually cruising at the back uh, and it's like, hey, hi, okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> See you <laughs> next time. <laughs> 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 but um, in those short brief meetings, I found out about the cool stuff she does and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to, um, have to invite Holly to come and share all the cool stuff she has done. So thanks Holly for coming along. No worries. So um, this is a little bit about Holly and you'll, you'll hear in amongst what I've got to share with you uh, why exactly I was like, this lady we need to have a conversation about because I think we'll find some juicy stuff about um, adventure racing, adventures and like what kind of drives her to get out and do some stuff that some of us may deem as completely crazy, but I would say that she probably thrives quite a lot on in that space. So. So Holly, she grew up in Glenorchy, which is the gateway to the Rootburn track and a natural adventure mecca for anyone who's been around there. Uh, I love that as a child, she was a scruffy wee kid <laughs> that ran around uh, with bare feet and wild red hair. Um, she's always had an adventurous soul and um, is also fed by the competition, both against herself and with others, which I love the sound of that. Uh, after finishing university, she came to Christchurch and was introduced to the world of multi-sport through the Spring Challenge. And it was there that she found her niche, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, she loves to find that pain cave, the battle it out and then come out the other side, which is usually on top of a mountain, which I love. Uh, since then, she's competed in a number of races, including the Red Bull Defiance. What? The 24 hour adventure races and the pinnacle um, was winning the open female category and the coast to coast longest day this year. So super excited. And she's got something on her list, uh, which is due to come out, uh, which she's got there, which is, and the next step is God Zone and seeking out some more adventures to push her limits. So welcome, Holly. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness girl reading that list of stuff I was just like I witnessed some of the God Zone uh, the last time when it came through Christchurch they had a row game that they timed up with it it was amazing and we watched these people coming through we had done a four-hour row game and I was like <laughs> and <laughs> these people that rolled over the Christchurch hill and into the Christchurch Adventure Park had been on like I think they might have even been it was either day one or day two but we were pooped after four hours and those guys had probably been already going for 12 hours. So I'm like, when I saw you wanted to do God Zone, I was like, oh my goodness, we have to talk about what taking you to that. But in order to go there, like, let's go all the way back to the start and like hear about like how you got into your, how you got into adventure first. And then how did you get into adventure racing? Like what made you go, yeah, I'm going to go run around for 24 hours and get lost and found and like find some major crazy limits. Yeah, I guess it, it does go back to the start really is that um, my upbringing in Glenorchy, we were kind of the offspring of quite an adventurous crowd, um, a few Olympic skiers and the kind of really crazy folk you'll see that go and climb a mountain and ski down and take their skis up or um, go out and live in the bush for like a month at a time. Quite happy sort of really eccentric um, adults and so we, we that was what we sort of had as our role models not particularly successful in a monetary sense but always adventure was like the pinnacle and what you would strive for the person that did the most outrageous thing was the coolest um, <laughs> so we were kind of just dragged along I think when I was one it was pretty dodgy but um, I was taken up a hill and that they decided they were going to have to paraglide down and no one wanted to take me down. So I got put in the paraglider <laughs> and taken down <laughs> to the bottom. So pretty extreme, probably wouldn't get away with it these days. Um, but ever since I was quite young, my friend and I 
always sort of tra travel around the mountains and um, it, there was quite a lot of connection between that and succeeding. It was like your um, ability to weather the storm, I guess, or like climb the mountain or be out for multiple days at a time um, was sort of our de definition of success, I suppose. Um, so then when I got into multi-sport, it was just quite second nature, like the idea of going out and pushing yourself and it being freezing and getting to the other side and multi-day. It's not like it, it didn't start at spring challenge. It's always sort of been there. It's just suddenly become mm. more of a competition than it used to be. So yeah, I guess that's the main part. And then um, yeah, once I got into multi-sport, I was like, this is this is just what we do normally, but now it's a competition, which is even more fun. <laughs> that's amazing. I love the fact that um, like it sort of says to me that, you know, from a young age, you were kind of like brought up in the space that like adventure, taking risks and pushing yourself was just a no just the normal, especially if you've got, like you say, people around you that have got Olympic backgrounds, there's a different mindset um, in talking to people who do stuff just for fun and then uh, athletes. There's this a real different commitment mindset and all of that that goes with it. So I guess if you're coming up from having people around you that are pushing their limits to that extreme and that's just everyday normal for you, it would just be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to go and like challenge myself to the extreme. Yeah, exactly. And it's also... Like they always pushed that we were independent, doing on our own from quite a young age. We were carrying our own packs and, you know, you never got help down from a tree and you sort of had that independence and the capability, even as a woman, like female or male, you're sort of expected to do it on your own um, if you want to get there, essentially. Yeah, that's amazing. So um, some of your um, childhood memories then, what are some of like, okay, we've heard that you paraglided at one. <laughs> uh, what are some of the other crazy stuff that you got up to that we would look back now and go, God, that's just mental, but that's just was your everyday kind of thing. Um, we used to like quite young kids used to go and just bivy out by ourselves in the wilderness, like walk one or two days and just take the bivvies and, or no bivvies, just sleep under the stars. Um, and sometimes take courses as well, sometimes not. Um, so pretty all over the place in that sense. I don't know how much control our parents had over us, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> probably, they're probably none, and they probably didn't need to have any. So um, there would be times where we'd have these competitions where we would have to make rafts out of whatever we can get and then go down the Dart River, which is actually quite a dangerous river. Um, <laughs> So they would have they would have races that they do that, and the community would sort of jump together and build these really haphazard sort of raft devices, and it would be a race to the lake. And I remember going, and I was just floating down the river on a barrel by the end of it. I don't know where the raft was. I don't know where the the, the adults or the children even were, but I was just sort of swimming down the river, hoping to eventually get down to the wharf in the lake. So a pretty crazy um, upbringing and community, definitely. And um, for a, when I was about 18, I think, or maybe 19, I lived in a tree house. <laughs> like lived, lived, or stayed like overnight? Like every now lived, and lived. So yeah, I finished yeah. high school and um, went back to Glenorchy for the summer. And um, our family friends had built a tree house, which had a double bed in it. And um, so I got to stay in the tree house. Um, <laughs> And it had like quite a big ladder up to it. And um, one night when I was asleep, a possum came in, which was pretty terrifying. <laughs> but you're really random. Oh my God. So it's fair to say that adventure really does run through your veins, right? Yeah, I guess so. It's definitely yeah. something that I'd always um, try and have. And when I don't, I don't feel quite in the right place, I guess. Yeah. Um, that's such an interesting thing to say, given that we are just, you know, just coming out of uh, lockdown in New Zealand uh, from level four to level three. And we've just, we were talking beforehand, just that little extra bit of freedom, just um, what that does. So how has it been for you uh, with having the restrictions and not being able to jump in the car and drive off to go get that real sense of like level of adventure that you probably get rather than just a casual walk around the hill or something like that? Yeah, it has been quite hard to grapple with. And I think that like, yes, we're really lucky and everyone's like, you've got to be grateful and you do. But also when you have that as your outlet and your way to escape. And then also 
it's kind of hard. I, I understand the restrictions of not wanting us to go into the back country, but it's also quite hard to come to terms with because you're going solo usually, or maybe with one, one other person and you're going away from the sort of mass amount of people. Whereas I'm quite close to Hagley Park where I'm staying. If I go for a run there, there uh, I've never seen so many people there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that's been a bit hard to come to terms with and just accept the rules and go along with them but I'm so excited to get out there again. We were already reeling off a couple of places that we wanted to go to and we were like what's your level three adventure list and we were bulleting off a few of these before just so we can just get that little bit more of a sense of adventure. So yeah. how do you think with that sort of growing up in that childhood of like adventure like I don't know if you want to use the word extreme, but you know, it's, it's definitely not your, just your everyday uh, adventure play where it's, you know, gentle and all of that. Like, how do you think that's shaped um, how you see the world now, how you see adventures now? Um, it, I guess extreme probably is quite a good word. Um, yeah. I'm always sort of looking for the extreme option and the next biggest thing. But so, let's face it. God's zone's not like just a casual walk in the park. That's freaking extreme. Yeah, it is. Um, I guess when you're in the multi-sport community, there's so many people that do it. So you, it gets so normalized and I haven't done it yet, but the idea of it seems like it's a tick of the box thing. And then what's the next thing going to be um, to do next? And it's not necessarily always going to be a race, but um, is there a certain distance we can cover or a range that hasn't, we haven't walked before? Mm. Something that really challenges you and pushes your limits. And I get a lot out of that, um, doing that and much more than I would something that's quite achievable if that yeah. makes sense <laughs> yeah totally what do you, what's the difference for you like doing something achievable versus doing something that's pushing the limits I'm just curious because it's you know this is the whole thing is what shapes us to be how we are and see the world and it's really fascinating to hear someone else's perspective of you know pushing the limits and things like that so yeah, I guess there's like a couple of facets to it. First one, you have to sort of work hard for it. And I think that's the really cool thing that we could all relate to, regardless of what mm -hmm. level we're adventuring on. When you go out into the um, wilderness or um, back country, you really have to deserve what you're seeing and what's around mm -hmm. you. Whereas if you drive there, you get, don't get nearly the same sort of satisfaction. Um, and whether that's just, you know, you go for a half a day walk if you're not really into it or you're just getting into it. And then you get to see on the other side of the port hills you've never seen before. Um, or whether it's you go for a three-day hike and you're in the middle of Arthur's Pass and there's nobody around and you just can't get there by a car. Um, and then the second one is like I like to like it to be a scary challenge. So if it's not scary, it probably isn't enough of a challenge in my perspective. Um, so like going to the coast to coast, I've talked about this a few times before, but I I did the um I guess the team relay, but I never did the two day. I went straight to the one day. Um, and wow. that was because that was the scarier option for me. The one that I wasn't sure whether I would be able to do or not, um, where I was fairly comfortable I would be able to do the two day after watching it. Yeah. So talk us through then, like you mentioned, spring challenge was kind of, I guess, maybe a bit of a springboard into the adventure sporting world. So talk, talk us through how you go from spring challenge, two-day team event, and then you go into, is Red Bull Defiance a team event as well? Yeah, it's a tandem. So you do the whole thing together. Yeah. Similar spring challenge. Yeah. yeah. And then you go to doing the longest day solo. And now you're looking at doing God's own, which distance and time and all that is just so, so walk us through that because that's, that's an amazing journey. And like, what's the time frame that you did that all over? Did you kind of go one year, next year, da, 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 or was it like one year? Okay, I'll do some other things. Oh, that I need, I need that times X times yeah. 20 more for fun. So, so um, sp spring challenge was the end of 2018. And then um, Rebel Defiance was early 2019. So not much in between wow. that. Um, yep. So yeah, it was a big step up, but um, it didn't actually feel like it at the time. I think if you train enough for something, then you get there and you realize something that seemed like a really massive, scary goal. If you've got the right preparation, it really isn't. Um, and then over the year, I did quite a few events, but um, signed up for the longest day after Coast to Coast had finished. 
in 2019. So pretty much the day after, signed up for Longest Day and then had a year to train for that um, with a whole heap of races in between because my coach Rich will probably tell you I like can't get enough of racing. <laughs> <laughs> to my detriment, probably. Um, sometimes I've definitely burnt out a couple of times, but I just love going to the events and like pushing your body like that, and also like catching up with all the people, like mm. huge community. I hate to miss out. I'm like, I really, really just want to go to that. I'll just go for fun. Like and, like, I go and it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a little bit of FOMO to like encourage you to get along to go and do something, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so that yeah, that year was spent learning to kayak doing quite badly at that, then not doing too badly, um, and yeah, getting used to a time trial bike and all of the logistics. And mostly adventures, like that's why I love this sport is because you go out and you spend a day on the YMAC or, you know, a day through Goats Pass or you go up some like crazy hill and that's training. It's not just going around a track and, or just like riding around the streets at home. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because it's like, you know, even at mm, the level of stuff that I do and I only do one, I do the Spirit of Women's Adventure Race. That's my adventure race and I love to do the row gaining. But um, I like how you explain that. It's like it is sometimes nice to have a little bit of purpose, sometimes behind going out and getting out and adventuring. Uh, we did the Tongariro Crossing late last year um, and the previous year I hadn't been well and I did the devil staircase and I thought it was death like I hated every minute of, of it because yeah. my fitness I'd done it two years previous and my fitness was great those and then I did it one year and it was terrible and it sucked and I hated it and I was like this year I'm going back I'm going to own that and so my mission with one of my friends from Christchurch who was coming to do the Tongariro Crossing is we're like right we have to go find steep stuff with stairs where we're climbing for an hour because that's what we're going to do on the devil staircase and then we got there and we were like, she was like, is that it? And I was like, um, yeah, sorry, that's it. And she's like, that was so easy. I was like, I remember dying on the, doing this the last time I did it. And there was a real sense of satisfaction. And it's not yeah. the extreme level of, you know, like doing the adventure race, but that, that having that reason to go and find those tracks, hunt out cool stuff, find things that were going to kind of match what we were off to do was like, I just... I get such a buzz out of that, like just finding new places to go and adventure. Yeah, totally. And I think you probably touched on it, like a lot of it as well, in terms of the team element, it just throws a whole lot extra in the mix because it's not just you, you're not just dealing with how you're feeling on the day, you're dealing mm. with how the other person's feeling. And it's a whole troubleshooting um, team management kind of exercise, which is like really fun if you like a challenge. Yeah. Um, so like, I'm sure God's going to be the same, but all the adventure races I've done, no one's ever peaking at the same time. And yeah. you know, <laughs> you're only as fast as your slowest member. Um, and it's really a kind of a cool thing to develop as the ability to deal with that and manage it. And rather than thinking, oh, that person's slow, being like, how can we manage this person to, to make them feel better? So is it food or um, do we need to slow down a bit? That sort of thing so that the team can progress, which is like, just such a fun little exercise and mm. adds an extra element rather than you always going out and slogging it out by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's so different. The, the, yeah. Having done adventures, like taking people on tours and all of that sort of stuff, it's a completely different dynamic of just having to manage that. And then when we did our adventure race as well, it was, um, yeah, it was definitely something to, the first one we did was definitely something to wrap our head around. Like you said, the team, has different skill sets so some are obviously better at other sports so they'll smash be able to smash that out and others weren't so um that i think is um yeah i think if you want to learn about yourself go do a adventure race in a team yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to discover about that so yeah. so you did um spirit uh, sorry not spirit the spring challenge and then like literally went straight into into Defiance. So anyone who hasn't seen Red Bull Defiance, what tell, just tell us a little bit about the event so people get yeah. th that it is not just a walk in the park. It's not. Unfortunately, they've actually, um, it, the events sort of died. So oh, That's a shame. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was a bit tragic. But um, it was a two-day event and, as I said, tandem. So you have to be within 50 metres of each other the whole way. Wow. Um, I think it could be about 4,000 vertical metres over the two days. So... Wow. Coast to coast is flat compared to this, like completely flat. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, and coast to coast so, has goats path in it, so. Yeah, exactly. Um, whereas the second run on the second day, which is the final leg, was about 27k and 1400 vertical meters. Um, wow. Up from Katrina, over the Skyline Traverse, they call it, and then down Roy's Peak. Yep. And that's our Oh, you came down. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which is quite surprising for a lot of tourists that are walking up. <laughs> there's all these people <laughs> running down with their on. Yeah. So there's also kayaking and mountain biking um, over the two days, the three three disciplines on each day. Um, so I hadn't really kayaked much before Defiance at all. So it was awful. <laughs> I hated it. Yes. Um, once, yeah. I, <laughs> once I learned to kayak, it was much easier. But if you don't have any technique, it's the hardest thing in the world to do. <laughs> So talk to us about then um, some of the skills yeah. that you've had to acquire. Because you mentioned you did, you spent a year learning to kayak, to go, to yeah. move into doing coast to coast. So from those two, let's call the two sort of starter ones, like what were the things that you suddenly realized, shit, I have to get a lot better at this. And then, um, you know, what were the learnings that you took from those two to then apply to, did you do um, coast to coast as a team and then longest day or you did just went straight to longest day? Yeah, I did it as a team, but I did the run in the final bike leg. So um, I definitely didn't, you know, get full exposure to what the race yes. is actually like in yeah. terms of how hard that kayak is. Um, so kayaking, pinpointing, that was a big weakness. Um, yeah. yeah. And so I started pretty early, got my grade two done quite early, but it, there was a lot of falling out <laughs> of the boat because it's not just technique. Technique's a huge part, but also like, being able to navigate the rivers, um, mm. the great two rivers, and you think you know what you're doing, you're like, oh, this is going to be easy, and then you're upside down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it was just a lot of time on the river. We're so lucky in Christchurch to be mm. right, right there mm. next to it. Um, you couldn't have any better water to train on, and also a huge community of people that are just willing to help are out every weekend and they, they put the hands up straight away and say like if any beginners with their grade two um <laughs> want to come out and um just come with us they you know they're slow they wait when you fall out and um there's lots of other people on the same not same boat but you know metaphorically. <laughs> <laughs> so, but <I'm> um, <laughs> yeah exactly um so i i put a lot of effort into my kayaking um, I think coming from a horse riding background, which is a really technical sport, I could kind of relate to the needing to constantly work on your technique rather than just go and battle it out. So I sort of reached out to quite a few people and tried to improve that and did quite a lot of kayaking over the summer. And so when I got to the race, the kayaking was by far the easiest league for me. Cool. I mean, yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Um, how did it feel going back to like, like learn, like having to learn a new skill all over again, uh, you know, so that you can master something? Um, it's kind of a hard one for me to grapple with because I'm so competitive. Mm, and, so um, I wanted to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we go along to these things and I would be like dead last and it's just so hard to come to terms with. I'm just not good at it. Um, as you probably know from coming to run group. <laughs> <laughs> um, See you at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just can't help it. Like, you may as yeah. well just admit it. Like, yeah. just the way Don't I am. fight it. Don't fight it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, so I was like, pretty determined and frustrated at the start that I couldn't go as fast as I wanted to be because like, I have got natural strengths, but it wasn't translating into the boat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just wasn't. So it took quite a while. But once I did get it, I was like pretty ferocious um, when we came to this like little mini head to head battles at the club. I was like definitely not letting up at all. Couldn't <sighs> couldn't let one single like race go away. <laughs> I'd finish off some of the sessions and just not be able to move anymore. I'd like not be able to yeah. paddle my arms. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, because it's so interesting, you know. I think I think sometimes that can be some of the things that will hold uh, can hold us back from trying new things. Like whether it's, uh, you know, that you want to be really great at it to compete or even just to go and try it, like to go try rock climbing or to try hiking or to try mountain biking is that we, um, is that we have this like, well, I'm going to be the beginner. I'm going to be that person that's at the start. It doesn't know shit about what we're doing. And we have this fear about going out and like looking like we don't know anything, look, being a bit vulnerable, sucking at something. So for um, 
anyone out there who's watching this, if they're if they're hearing this, what sort of advice do you have for any of the women that might be going, I really want to try this thing, but you know, like what shoes should I wear? Or, you know, uh, we're just making up all these excuses about why they're not getting out and just doing it. Yeah, I mean, I think you sort of hit the nail on the head there is just do it because everybody sucks. Like, I haven't seen one person that's starting this journey, whatever journey it is, and you're like, you're just amazing at this. And even now, I'm still terrible. Like, I go and I'm no longer training with people that are just beginning. So I'm training with people that are quite experienced. And I'm always getting dropped, like every day. I'm always the slowest. And I never finish feeling like, oh, I'm so fast and awesome at this sport. I've absolutely nailed it because I haven't. <laughs> um, there's always going to be more of a challenge. And yeah, you've just got to get started. And this isn't the sort of community that's judgmental. Um, mm. I'm not just talking about most sport, like you know, running or just hiking or whatever it is. It's just one of those ones where it seems to be all embracing and everyone's really excited to have more people doing it. Um, so it's quite like a leveling thing, the outdoors. It's not, it doesn't really matter what kind of background you came from or anything like that or um, any of those insecurities that you might have. Once you get out there, everyone's just doing the same thing and probably battling just as much as each other. Yeah, absolutely. So what's... Um, um... Tell us about something that's like really challenged you. When have you been going through like, cause it's like, we all hit those walls at times, you know, like even whether it's just getting out and starting something and looking like we suck at it um, to being out on a trail or, you know, at, at any of your races where you've sort of hit this wall of like whatever. Um, and then what you've had to do to, to push through that. Yeah. I mean, it happens a lot. Because <laughs> I was going to say, it's a big, like the longest day is called the longest day for a reason. Yeah. And you can't just breeze through that. The oh, well, I'm totally making an assumption. You don't just breeze through that the entire day feeling like you got got it all together and it's all dialed in and everything's working. It's like, there's got to be moments where you're oscillating between I've got my shit together and whose stupid idea was this? I got my shit together. Well, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure. Track? Um, I can't speak for the winners of the race, but I'm pretty sure they battle just as much as everybody. It's just mm. who can manage it the best. Like in those long distance races, everyone's got probably five or six pretty decent challenges that they face um, that they have to be able to mentally overcome. And that's the big thing is the mental side, like who can still push through and keep moving forward. Um, my big one was on the run section of Goats Pass. I had had really horrendous cramps and not just in my legs but in my toes so when wow. you I was climbing up the big boulders I would like almost sort of have to slide back down and then try again which was incredibly frustrating when you've trained so much on that course and you know how quickly you can do it and you're looking at your watch and like this is just absolutely not the day that I had planned um so yeah it's just I sort of rely on a few things to tell myself which are really random like you enjoy this whenever it hurts this is a big one I go for like you, you know you're supposed to be good at this this is like what you consider is one of your strengths even though you're like doing terribly mentally um that's just something I say to myself I'm like you just this is exactly what you have been looking for what you say you do so now this is the opportunity to, to do it mm. and when you're at that time you're like no it's not I just want to go home <laughs> <laughs> um well, but you don't, you've got to get to the end of the run. And when you do, you're always all the more stoked for finishing it. If it has been a lot harder than you expected. Um, so it's a constantly evolving thing that I've learned so much in the last two years. Um, and you read so much about it. Any autobiography that you mm. have with the elite athlete has exactly the same story. It's a mental toughness. Um, and that would probably translate into somebody starting out as well. Um, it's probably going to be a bit difficult. You're going to deal with cold and things you haven't dealt with before. You're not at home. Um, so it's just ability of realizing that's all part of the adventure. So what makes you go back for more then? So the next, so you've got your next, so you've set, you know, you've got, you kind of got your eye on God zone. Um, after the longest day, you get to the end of that, which congratulations on your placing in that as well. So um, actually, you want to tell us a little bit about the longest day? I'm sure the girls would love to hear about how that was for you and just about the race in general. Yeah, sure. So um, started out, it was just going to be not just, I shouldn't like overplay that. It was going to be a complete completion event. And it is for a lot of people. It's, there's really quite hard cutoffs, cutoff times for the event. 
um, there's lots of people that go back and, you know, they fail the first time and they go and do it again. And um, it's just a massive life challenge. But I sort of being super competitive and putting a lot of work in um, did actually have a goal of getting top 10 out of the females. Um, so that was pretty scary. And probably the last three months that I was training, I was pretty focused, but also terrified of just failing at that. Mm -hmm. Not that I really told many people that was the goal. Um, but I think a lot of people knew as well. And I thought, what if I come back and haven't completed that? Um, how's that going to look for me? Um, so got there and did the race essentially and um, didn't have a great run, as I said, but managed to bike my way back into the race and surprisingly came off the run, I think, in ninth place um, out of the elites in the opens. And then had a really good kayak. And um, so I came in the end seventh out of the elites and um, the first open female. Um, the six elite woman was eight seconds in front of me <laughs> at the ah. finish um, which I didn't know the whole time I had I was actually chasing her on the bike I was just like absolutely stoked with my day already I was like I'm seventh no one's catching me I was like this is awesome I was biking home and then everyone at um, the finish line was watching the little track has been like come on Holly what are you doing and I was just like having a good time I'm like, rocking my shit and then I got to the finish line and she turned around she's like whoa that was really close um so yeah it was a, it was an awesome day out it was um probably one of the big highlights where I've actually achieved a goal I've set um it was quite a weird thing to process and and really really cool and such a good community as well um we're able to sort of celebrate in that because I'm always out there training with you know the people that are just getting into the sport rather than a lot of the elites who are often trained by themselves or together um so yeah, definitely going back for more. Um, the next big challenge is getting a lot faster so I can be a bit more competitive, which is really hard. And um, I guess when you talk about getting to a sort of a wall, that's my big wall next is the improvement's really slow. Um, so I've gone to a point where I can sort of get my mental game, but my legs just won't run fast enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've just got to be patient with the process and hopefully um, I'll get to the point where I can and Gozonal fits in with that as well, like learning how to test yourself and getting a lot stronger and um, yeah, constantly building on that definitely isn't a ceiling that's been met yet, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So for anyone watching this, do you want to explain the difference like compared to the longest day compared to God Zone for anyone who doesn't know what God Zone is in terms of yeah, so how just how big a step up it is? Well, they're very different. The longest mm -hmm. day Yes. Um, is obviously one day and it's it's really fast um, so it's 283 don't quote me on that um, kilometers and you race it really hard all day um, so God's own could be for some teams in some of some of the races it's been 10 days you're probably looking, looking more about five days going straight um, it's a lot slower um, and yeah, you're going all day. So it's more of an endurance race and eating competition. Um, <laughs> and a lot to do with mental health and navigation, which is obviously the big difference, um, which you don't have at coast to coast, mm. really. You pretty much know where you're going. Um, so you're in a team of four for God's Zone as well. Um, there's a compulsory um, restriction. That you have to have one female in each team and some have more, but um, the team that I'm in it just has me and then three males. Um, which is quite a cool way to do it. Like it integrates females into the sport as well. And the team that won last year had two females. In, yes, so they the did. Yeah. Yeah. First yeah, gender that, balance team. Yeah. yeah that um, was exciting to see that. So, so exciting and like quite an interesting one because there is that strength element involved with it as well, um, which usually the men are better at, but um, there's also the other side where we see all the time that females are just as good at endurance sports. Um, what those massive, as the race gets longer, the females start to level up the field a lot more. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So where do you see um, the next lot of training being for you then uh, moving into something that's same, same, but totally different, you know, navigation, longer days, a steadier pace, all of that sort of thing. Where is where are you focused on training for moving into that? The cool part about that is it's just like massive adventures. 
like two, <laughs> uh, two, three days out on your feet or on your bikes with your team or with, you know, your, whoever your adventure buddies are. Um, so pretty much what you, a lot of, what you would do is training as well. Um, sometimes with a little bit less sleep and um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not staying in a um, cabin, but maybe. <laughs> um, so that's going to be what it is, I think. Unfortunately, God Zone has been postponed to next mm. year, which was a good call, but a little bit disappointing because it was one thing to look forward to near the end of the year. Yeah. Um, but everyone seems to be in the same boat. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll just be traipsing around the hills for the next few months or several months. Um, and, yeah, just getting stronger. The hills are probably the best trainers. You don't wouldn't get a better gym than going out and traipsing up some mountains. <laughs> That's the reason I moved here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, so what is um, for 2020 for you then adventure wise? <clears throat> what have you got to look forward to that's either for fun or for, for a challenge for you? Um, it'll definitely be just getting out and enjoying being able to adventure again. Um, have you know mm. we probably took that for granted and i'm just going to focus on doing some epic missions um going places i haven't been before um for a couple of days at a time whatever mm. work will allow <laughs> yeah. um yeah i don't know i haven't thought about any races that might be on near the end of the year um but they might look a bit different but Probably my training for Coast to Coast will be more focused now um, because God Zone was going to be in November and then mm -hmm. Coast was in February, so it was going to be quite a quick turnaround. But now it'll be a matter of like really sharpening up before Coast to Coast and putting some focus into that come, let's say, September. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to get out and do everything that we uh, were used to doing. And it's so interesting that you point on the fact of like, you know, just being, we did potentially take what we have on our doorstep for granted um you know the landscape's going to be quite different um once everything opens up and um i think there's a real sense of gratitude one for where we live and the fact that we're in new zealand and that we do have it all on our doorstep so it um you know. yeah i definitely agree i think i was stupid enough to do a post on instagram just before we really knew what covid was going to look like was yeah like enjoying something they can't cancel and we were out running in the hills <laughs> i was like oh <laughs> yes you can <laughs> wait a second <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think yeah oh, or you can cancel it <laughs> okay <laughs> okay just kidding <laughs> <laughs> so um some if you talked about epic missions just a little bit like ago just that you're gonna get out and do that so for um maybe for some of the ladies that are watching here um i'd love to know what like maybe some of your top like epic missions are that there's some women out there that uh, they want to maybe challenge themselves like with a couple of day adventure like things that are yep. back to back type things is there like do you have, like can you come up with three of your favorite multi-day or treks or runs or yep. something in that space that the women can go right i'm gonna add that to my adventure bucket list absolutely um obviously the big um disclaimer there is that we're coming into winter and um yes you've got to be capable and know the river levels, et cetera. So some of the ones I might talk about definitely are weather dependent. Um, but I have really been itching to get over to the West Coast to the Paparoa Trail and Old Ghost Road. Oh, yes. Old Ghost, it will not disappoint you. Yeah, I can't believe I haven't been there yet. Um, I actually like sneakily tried to book one a Paparoa Trail in before we went into lockdown and I got oh. quite a Kurt email back from them and be like, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just, yeah, there's so much in Arthur's Pass. It's it's ridiculous. And lots that you could actually stay in a hut as well. Um, Any I'm, specific planning, ones that stand out for you for Arthur's Pass? I'm planning on going and checking out um, Lake Mavis, which is just above Goat's Pass. Um, I haven't been out there before, but Goat's Pass is pretty navigate. Not sure about how to say that word. You can navigate it easily. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> yeah. um, and also, if you haven't, I, I'd go check out Goats Pass if the rivers are low enough when you can, if not in spring, um, or just go with somebody that there's so many people that have done coast to coast that are yeah. capable enough to take you when the rivers are low enough if you wanted a guide. But it's really spectacular, um, and you don't have to do coast to coast to go up there at all. Um, 
And I think there's been talk of going to try and find out where the um, YMAC, YMAC coal is. <laughs> I don't know about that one, but that's, <laughs> that's apparently on the cards. Um, but I'm just trying to, yeah, I'm trying to check out all the new places just as much as everyone else is. So if anyone's mm. got any ideas, then I'll, I'll jump on those as well. And um, we've got such a cool female community. Um, I was talking to Jules from Further Faster about yeah. doing some trips with them as well and um, sort of introducing some of the people that wouldn't usually feel confident for going out on those things or even know where to go, um, yeah. just taking them out, maybe staying the night. Um, and that's so cool, just introducing people to something like that when they haven't before. 100% like uh, given that that's what I used to do up in Auckland I know that there's women down here in Christchurch that are just craving that um, that network and that um, to go with somebody who just ha who who can just help them get over that initial worry or fear of doing it and doing it collectively with a bunch of Brad women as well so yeah good old Jules and yeah, no. faster we love her <laughs> <laughs> I know it's such a legend but yeah. I've been so lucky um, for the people that have sort of taken me in and showed me everything that it's, it definitely is this next year time for me to sort of give back in that regard and um, sort of help others get there as well because it is really accessible but you might not think so straight away. Um, I've definitely got some friends that would love the idea of it but I just don't know where to start. So we'll be dragging them along. <laughs> oh, that's totally it. Like, you know, when I moved here, Jules and Jules from Further Faster, she's one of my best friends down here now. Like, she literally just took me in under her wing, and I'm so grateful that we connected and that um, we get to be adventure buddies and stuff like that. And she's been great because we like she took me up Avalanche Peak and stuff like that, which I just one probably like the name of it would never have just done it because I was like the name yeah. scares the shit out of me. Um, but it's just great having that network of um, of girlfriends to to inspire you and to I'll use the word like pull you along uh, for the adventure and things like that. So because you've talked about community quite a lot throughout this you know throughout yeah. our conversation and stuff like that, you keep referring to it. And I do a hundred percent agree with you that the adventure community of of anything is. Um, so open, so welcoming, whether you're a mountain biker, a kayaker or whatever, it's like just everyone's there to offer a hand and try and help you out how they can. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so if you've got one message for um, the women out there who want to have a little bit more fun and adventure in their lives, um, but they're afraid to take that step, what would your message be to them? Talk to you probably. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, like, do reach out to any of us um, if you need to, and like I said before, and just do it. Um, we don't have as many excuses anymore, and I think we've sort of been stripped away from those of reasons why we can't. And mm. all you need to start off with is a pair of shoes, and if you need to borrow some stuff, I'm sure that can be arranged. Like, when I first started multisport, I thought it was really inaccessible as well. Um, but once you get in, you just get in and you slowly accumulate the gear and sort out what you need. And there's just, you know, go and check out further faster or there's just a wealth of knowledge out there um, and people that are willing to help. So just do it. Yeah, hundred percent. I love it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> so if you guys want to follow any of um, Holly's adventures, cause she's um, always sharing her cool stuff. You can follow her on Instagram um, at Holly underscore Western underscore dot nz i will make sure i put the url with this video so you can click through and follow her cool adventures and i've got my fingers crossed that um you guys will maybe do some um group stuff and get some other ladies out and of course you know i would be more than happy to share that um in a, amongst our network and i'm sure there's a bunch of ladies already watching this going yes please <laughs> so um, <laughs> i do hope that is and thanks again so much for just sharing all the stuff that you did it's been really great chatting to you and just like finding out what really drives you You know you've got such a competitive spirit and it makes me rethink how I see adventure sometimes uh, so I love that I love the fact that in talking to women like you it just gets me to rethink adventure how I see it and you know maybe challenge me to find something else that's going to be a little bit more on the scary side that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies, thank you so much, um, Holly, and for all you ladies watching this, um, here's to getting more ladies out doing some cool shit. If you want to follow our stuff, make sure that you check us out at whysheadventures.com and you can come and meet up with a whole lot of cool ladies across New Zealand and get out and do some cool shit.
Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.